When is it okay to confidently state that an orchid is now out of rescue mode? Not that the status can't change in the future because we're growing the divas of the plant world after all. But if you have or ever have had an orchid in rescue mode, at what stage did you come to the conclusion that your orchid is not a rescue orchid anymore? I'm going to tell you how I determine an orchid labeled as an orchid in rescue mode as rescued. And we're going to change up the setup of orchids that I believe are in their next stage of their rescue journey in the hopes to one day consider them rescued. Woohoo! You're still here! Thank you so much, it's good to have you on the patio in southern Spain. The first thing I take into consideration when I dare to stop calling an orchid in rescue mode, so to speak, because I don't want to jinx things, <laughs> is to keep her state when she went into rescue mode in mind. That visual, what happened, what I saw had happened, etc. When it was finally determined, dang, this orchid is now in rescue mode. Well, those observations are important to see if there has been a significant change in all aspects over an extended period of time. These aspects include a healthy root system. And when I say a healthy root system, I mean at least two years back to back of a viable root system to sustain what comes next, which are glossy leaves or leaf, depending. But whichever it is, there are no signs of dehydration. Same with a suitable if the orchid is sympodial. The structure is glossy and plump. In addition to that, there should be no signs of pest threats to the orchid because we know that they love going for the weak ones, right? Well, a strong orchid can ward off those threats much better once it is strong as opposed to while it is languishing and weak. The fact she is going to bloom, that is not something I take into consideration. The orchid does not have to bloom again for me to deem her rescued. Blooms will only be permitted in my collection when I see that the roots are doing their job absorbing nutrients and can sustain the needs of the orchid. So, blooms do not determine whether I deem an orchid rescued. It's nice when it happens, they add another layer of satisfaction, but they do not prove that the orchid is truly healthy, because we also know that the weak and struggling orchids will try to bloom as a last resort attempt at saving their kind, hoping for the pollinators to do the deed, and seed pods would be the result. So I never go by, now my orchid is rescued because of how many blooms she keeps on having. My examples show larger structures than before and a root system that is not failing for lack of energy, not being able to take up much needed nutrients. Also in the case of orchids with more than one leaf, the fact that the growths open up as they should and don't stay closed as a form of protection from further dehydration via their leaves. There's also one final test that I put an orchid through in order to determine if she can truly be considered rescued, and that is to expose her to conditions that she can handle as a healthy orchid. Prior to this stage, an orchid in rescue mode in my collection is always in 50% exposure of conditions that she can handle to protect her from the stress of not being able to cope with the full potential of normal conditions if she were a healthy orchid. Passing that final test includes the maximum light exposure as a test to see if the leaves are going to show signs of stress. That would show itself in anthocyanin happening far too soon, also taking a long time to recede once the orchid has been pulled back from the high light or the leaves heating up too fast, whereas if the orchid is healthy, they should not heat up that fast. Really, I'm pushing the limits of the orchid in the high light to watch her response. If she passed that final and, in my opinion, the most important stressful thing for an orchid in rescue mode is too much light, but if an orchid passes that test, I can confidently consider an orchid that was in rescue mode now well and truly rescued. It took three years to get my two examples here today to graduate from imminent leaving the collection status to now being considered rescued. So I hope that if you have orchids that are not doing well and that you consider them in rescue mode and are caring for them as such, that this video helped you out to look for the signs of a turnaround to determining when your orchid is actually rescued and that this video was helpful in doing so. Please, once again, don't think because your orchid is going to bloom that she is rescued. It can be the case, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is the case. 
It is something to celebrate, but it is also something to be very, very observant of so as not to stress the orchid out by way of expending so much energy in order for her to bloom that she will then go back right into rescue mode. The two orchids I'm showing as my examples that are now rescued, in my opinion, they have not bloomed yet and we will have to wait and see when they bloom. However, considering what is going on in the pot, how the structures are looking, now there's also new growth starting on one of them. If they want to bloom, they can. The moment I feel a little bit tense about it though, and things aren't looking good with the back structures, the spike comes off and then we can wait another year. But my orchids are rescued, whether they've bloomed or not. Now, while I change my little staging area and we are going to get to the next phase of the two orchids I want to address today, put them in a different setup, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. I truly appreciate the support. Thank you. Now, let's address the orchids that are still in rescue mode. There are several reasons for their decline. Remember I said the history, what happened? Here I'm going to explain to you what happened with these two. Luckily for me, there is a common thread as to what happened to these two. The major cause of these two orchids being in the state they are in is scale. Scale that I did not recognize soon enough. The other reason could be that I grew them in Lekka and self-watering. So the evaporative cooling of the Lekka during the winter did a number on the root system, weakened by the pests, not strong enough to help them get through the less than ideal conditions in my winter after my circumstances changed. It is important to analyze the decline of an orchid with as many possibilities for the decline as possible, then eliminate them one by one. I have managed the scale, I have managed to tie the orchids over until they grew some roots. My purple gem Aida being in this setup for the past three years. My Sogo Vivian struggling for the past two years. While it would appear purple gem Aida appears to have better roots, these are the roots of three years. So it's not as if she is exactly vigorous, but neither is my Sogo Vivian. Well, there isn't much to work with with her either, but it is super important at this stage to protect the two roots that we have. As this orchid is super weak, I'm not messing around with Lekka and self-watering. Instead, I'm going to opt for an orchid top and lava rock to hopefully regain her trust and have her in the collection for many years to come. The two pieces of my purple gem Aida are going back into self-watering, but this time around I'm going to use lava rock. No evaporative cooling. I like the self-watering option because it suits my climate for the majority of the year. And as Lava Rock is inorganic, I consider it a great compromise. So let's get these two sorted out. For fans of the fiddle, I've got the footage where I took these two pieces of the purple gem Aida out and removed the hob filter material without slicing into any roots. <laughs> now, the reason I have two tags for this orchid is because well, she fell into two pieces when I took her and rescued her and put her into this setup. So I always have one. The original piece is the one that's growing a new leaf. The ninja orchids piece is the one that's not growing a new leaf. I probably won't be able to distinguish if everything goes according to plan. I probably won't be able to distinguish which one is which once they both grow nicely and start blooming for us again. But I'm going to put them in the same pot initially because of the two tags, I thought, you know what? No, they're going into separate pots when the time comes. But in this instance, mm -mm, space is going to be a problemo. So they're going into the same pot. I love this orchid. The reason I have a support in there is not because I intend to tie the structures to the support, but this orchid has a very long spike and she is a sequential bloomer, which is beautiful. And eventually she'll go pendant, but at least for the protection of the spike for the duration of its growth period before it blooms out and then droops and goes pendant, I've got the support for when the time comes. So we're just gonna potter up with medium to small lava rock. Wonderful. So nice to see this orchid in a pot again. Woohoo! Now let's hope 
she grows and eventually blooms for us. In her example, if she throws out a spike, it's going to be precarious because it takes forever for the buds to separate from the spikes. I don't want her to bloom if she tries to bloom for us the next go around, depending on how the foliage develops and how the roots go into the pot. So it is yet to be determined if during early spring, late winter, we are going to see purple gem Aida blooms again or not. Fingers crossed that my decision-making process is made so much easier and that we will see the blooms again because the energy that this orchid needs to produce a spike before the buds separate, before I can cut the spike, yeah, I would rather she would just not even produce a spike. <laughs> okay, moving on to Sogo Vivian, our dear stingy root growing orchid. Let's see what we can do with her. Maybe we can improve her status quo for the future as well. Yeah. <laughs> in Swahili, we have a word. It's called mingi. Mingi means a lot, as in mucho in Spanish. <laughs> mingi room for improvement on this orchid. But there's only one way to get it done, and that is to change the setup, make it a little bit more appealing, hopefully. The fact she's still in the collection borders on a miracle. Now there is a route going down into the lecker. How long, how long, how long is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's another one. Wait, don't yank. Don't yank. Ooh, this is what's been holding her. Oh, okay. Woohoo. That is something I was not expecting. I was always vying for that one root that's there. Where are you going and why are you catching? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that orchid top. <clears throat> Am I going to be able to fandangle this root into that orchid top? I have my doubts. But once again, let's give it a go. Let's try it out. See how that stopped? And that is because lacquer was too dry at the surface. So it took the root tip out. No bueno. Clearly, not a brancher. <laughs> Now let's see. Let's see who is going to give first, me or the root. Because yes, I do want her in here. I really do. I suppose we could take off some nastiness. I wasn't going to, but hey, it is a YouTube channel with some kind of style after all, because I don't normally do this because it's not here nor there in this kind of a setup. So we're not bendy bendy, definitely not a bendy bendy root, but it's been used to water, so it has to go in. But I also want to respect the root in the back. Hmm. That's as far as I dare stress that root out. So, okay. The reason I'm not putting this in water is the velamen is damp, my leka is medium to small. So there's not that much abrasion or damage going to happen. The difference being with the root that is sticking out over there with a nice root tip. That's going to be the different story. I just want to put her into place though before I address that so that the root that I've just curled into the bottom of this orchid top stays put. I did put a little support in, in case I need it, maybe for future reference, but I doubt I need it right now. Can we get her a little bit more upright, maybe? Ha, da, 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 da. Well, it is a nice revelation to have seen that long root. That is a great help, but it also is a nuisance when it comes to <laughs> putting the orchid into the center and getting that root tip. <laughs> To touch media. <laughs> we can't have it all, can we? Can't have it all. No, I can't have you move. My third hand today is malfunctioning. Don't bash the root tip. Don't bash the root tip. Phew, there it is, my third hand. Okay, individual. That's what we'll do, individual. Mm. 
very strategic placement of the tag because we've got two options. <laughs> Either the root is going to grow up the tag or it's going to grow down along the tag. Either way, we're going to stop it from trying to get out of the orchid top. <laughs> Fear not. It is a nice breezy day. They're going to stay outside so that the crowns can dry out before I take them back indoors to their 50% care <laughs> location. I've got that long root of the Sorgo Vivian right here. So I'm going to watch that. It may be happy. It may not. It may die. It may not. But keeping water in the tray of my orchid top should help out with the fact that this root is accustomed to a self-watering setup with Lekka. So this may be a tad too dry for it. However, the little root in the back with the root tip, it is taking up water. That to me is very encouraging. Keeping fingers crossed that this orchid top now has a little permanent resident for the next three years, if not longer, and that both these orchids are now in their next phase of rescue mode. Hopefully some of the tips that you heard about at the beginning of the video were helpful to you. Seeing a little bit of rescue orchids in action that are not being tossed, but moved into the next phase of their improved developments, for lack of a better term. Any questions? Or just say hi. The comments are there for a reason. Love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching to the end. The support is so appreciated. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.